This will be a plainly intriguing video. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to my shop. One of the questions I've been getting a lot recently is what are all the different parts in a hand plane? How do you take them apart? What is a frog? And uh, how do you adjust these things? So I want to go into detail a little bit more about the parts of the hand plane because in a lot of my videos I'll talk about you know the frog, the lever adjuster, the uh, lever cap, the cap iron. What are all these parts and how do they come about it? I'm not going to be talking about the actual setting up of the plane because I have several videos on that topic and I could take a whole entire video to go into that, as I have. So if you want to know about the difference between a scrub plane or a smoothing plane or what the different numbers in the, uh, the Stanley lineup are, I'll leave a link to all those down in the description and you can go through that if you have a specific question on that. But today we want to look at what are the parts and how do you take them apart. Now for the sake of this video, I'm going to be looking at the three most common basic type of hand plane. Number one, the Stanley Bailey pattern hand plane. This is kind of what most all hand planes are going to work, are based off of, and 99% of all of them are going to have the same design, the same pieces, and how they all come apart. So we're going to take a look at that. Number two is your low angle plane. It's very similar to the Bailey pattern in many ways, but there are a lot of things in this that are far more simplified. And uh, I just want to go through and show some of the differences between the two so that you don't get confused. I do also have a video on what's the difference between a bevel down and a bevel up plane. So if you want to see that and go into actual um, differences and how they're used, I'll leave a link to that as well. And then number three, I want to look at a block plane. Now I'm going to be looking at uh, these two types of block planes. They're the two of the most common ones, but in all honesty, there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of block planes. So I cannot cover them all in one video. I would love to. Um, but these are the most common ones that you'll see, and I'll try and touch on some of the other things you might commonly come across. But uh, for right now, these are what we're going to be looking at. So first, let's look at the Bailey pattern hand plane. The first thing you're going to do is pull this lever, and this is called the lever cap. It is the cap that goes on top, and it has a lever. A lever cap, you're also going to hear a few other words for it, um, but probably the most common is lever cap. There's usually a piece of spring steel on the back, and both the lever and the spring steel are held on um, with rivets and peened in place. Very rarely do you ever take this apart when you're actually restoring it. You just keep it as one piece. Then the next thing is we can pull off the cap iron, or the chip breaker, and the iron itself. Now one thing a lot of people like to do is take this screw off with using the lever cap because it fits in here nicely and it suddenly becomes a screwdriver, right? Well, this is actually a cast component and breaks easily. And it's very often that you see a lot of these lever caps that have these big chips taken out of it. Not a huge problem because it doesn't affect the functionality of the plane, but it's a, eh, it doesn't look so good. So that's why I always have a screwdriver on hand to loosen the screw rather than taking the lever cap and trying to uh, take the screw off. Now once we loosen it up, the first thing you want to do is slide the chip breaker back, turn it 90 degrees, then slide it forward and take it off. The reason we do that is we don't want to push the chip breaker forward. That might actually chip or dent the uh, very cutting edge of the iron. So we always want to slide it back, turn it 90 degrees, and that allows us to pull it off without touching the blade of the iron. The next thing we have is the frog, and the frog can be removed by taking out a couple screws in here, then you pull this whole piece out. This whole contraption altogether is called the frog. Basically, in any plane, the bed that the iron sits on, if the bed can come out, is called the frog. The frog then has several parts. Number one, you have the screw that holds the lever cap down, so it's often called the lever cap screw or the lever cap bolt. Then on the back, you have the depth adjustment knob, and if you run this all the way back, then the yoke will let loose on it, and this little piece here is the yoke. The yoke goes all the way through the frog, and the yoke is what then engages with the chip breaker to slide the whole contraption forward down deeper or to back it up so you get a shallower cut. So as you move that screw back and forth, it moves the yoke back and forth, that puts the depth of the blade in and out of the work. Then you have your lateral adjuster. This is the piece in the back that sits into the blade and this right here rides and slides the blade side to side. That will put one side of the blade farther down into the work or the other side of the blade farther down the work or what you normally do is you even it out so that you're cutting the same amount all the way across the iron. So you have your lateral adjuster. Usually when you're restoring it you don't take this off because this is peened in place with another rivet. Uh, you can take that out but mm, not worth it. Also the yoke rarely comes out because it is also peened in place with a rivet. Then on many of the planes made in the last hundred years or so you're also going to see this other bolt on the back here and that fits into the frog adjustment yoke. This is a small piece of metal that then sits in there and when you adjust that screw in and out it allows you to adjust the frog forward and backward so you can actually get a perfect placement for the iron 
cutting into the work. This is a really useful tool allowing you to adjust precisely where the iron is and how tight your mouth is so you can actually close up the mouth and get a tighter cut. Then on the body of the plane you have your front knob and your rear tote. And they are both handles, but it's rare to actually call them a handle. Most people will refer to them as the knob and the tote. That way you can be specific because if you're talking about a handle, are you talking about the front one or the back one? Um, there's a knob and a tote. So then to recap, we have the lever cap. We have the cap iron or the chip breaker, depending upon what you want to occur. I usually call it the chip breaker, but sometimes I'll call it the cap iron. Then you have the iron, and one of the reasons why it's called the cap iron is because it caps the iron, and some people actually call it an iron itself, but usually the iron is the blade that is actually doing the cutting. Then you have the frog and all of the accoutrements that go onto the frog that allow the adjustment. And then you have your main body, your sole, your tote, and your knob. Next we have our low angle plane. It is much simpler than the Bailey pattern because it doesn't have the frog, it doesn't have a lot of the other fixtures, it doesn't have a chip breaker, uh, so it's fairly easy. You're still gonna have your lever cap, and in this case there is no lever because there is a tensioning knob. That is fairly common, uh, particularly if you have a Norris adjuster. I'll get to that in a minute. Then underneath that you have your iron. Usually with your low angle planes, the iron is gonna be much thicker. One of the benefits of a low angle plane is less chatter because you're not lifting it up so high and having a thicker iron increases that a little bit easier. And so a nice thick iron is fantastic. Number two, it does not have a chip breaker. So there's nothing that comes down to the edge. The reason is that is because the bevel on this is up as opposed to most Bailey pattern planes, the bevel is down. Then underneath that, we do not have a frog. And so that's what makes this far simpler because there is no lateral adjuster, there is no depth adjuster. All it is is this one contraption that kind of takes everything into one place. This is called a Norris adjuster or a Norris style adjuster. And this all in one does all of the adjustments needed to actually move this plane. The Norris adjuster allows you to screw this in and out, which moves this little button back and forth. That back and forth movement allows the iron to engage and disengage in the plane. So it moves the iron back and forth. And then moving this knob side to side gives you your lateral adjustment. So with one little device, you have all of your adjustment. It makes it really nice. And it does have, tend to have a little bit more of a detailed adjustment. Um, some people like them, some people don't, uh, but you'll find them very commonly on your low angle planes. Because there is no frog, don't call this space the frog. Um, you'll get some people who look at funny at you. This is the bed of the plane. This is what everything fits into. And again, we also have our tote, and our knob, but actually in this case, the knob is a functioning piece. You can loosen this up and you can move this lever side to side. And what that lever does is it actually opens and closes the mouth. You can see how I move it in here and the mouth opens up larger and I pull it back the other way and the mouth closes up. That allows you to put the mouth right up next to the iron so you can have a really tight closed mouth and then you can tighten the knob, lock this down in and that holds it in place. Underneath, you'll see the sole here will actually slide in and out to close the mouth. So you can see how this is a much simpler and easier thing, your Bailey pattern plane. You have your lever cap, you have your iron, you have the bed of the plane, which is attached to the sole and the body, it's all one piece. You have your tote and your knob. You have your mouth adjustment lever, and then you have your Norris adjustment. It's kind of this all in one piece that makes the plane work. So now let's move on to the block planes. And in this case, it is very similar to your low angle jack plane. Uh, because it is a low angle plane and you can take off the lever cap and in this case there's a weird little lever that slides side to side that actually will tighten this thing down in place. Then underneath that you have the iron which sits just like it does in the low angle plane. And from that point on the planes really start to change here because there are so many different contraptions used for adjusting a block plane. In this particular one, which is a fairly common one, you have a lateral adjuster, which is a lateral adjuster very similar to the Bailey pattern plane. Then the depth adjustment is run by this weird screw in the back and this nut rides up and down on the thread rod that moves this lever up and down. And on the end of that lever, there is a half of a gear. That half of a gear, the teeth engage with this back of the plane here. So as that gear moves forward, it actually forces the iron forward. And as that gear goes down and the screw goes down, then that pulls the blade back. And so you can get a bit of adjustment in and out. Some of these planes are gonna have a lot of bed surface in here, and some of them are not gonna have as much. In this one, there's very little, if any, bed surface. Um, it basically just sits back here on this plate and then right up in here. So there tends to be a little bit of chatter, but because it's a low angle bevel up style, there's less of that. Then on the front of this, much like with the low angle plane, we also have a mouth adjustment. So the front knob up here, you can loosen, and then there is a mouth adjustment lever here that allows you to open and close the mouth tight to the iron. 
and underneath it has the same piece with the whole mouth that can slide back and forth. So in a lot of respects, it is very similar to your low angle plane, just in a tighter, more compact version. Another style you're gonna come across often is this lever style, and this whole piece then pops up and comes off. And it's just kind of a cool contraption here. I wanna restore this one and clean it up, but it works, it's functional, so I haven't had a need to yet. It has the lever cap on here, and then you can see the hinge in the back that actually pops this down in place and locks it in. Then underneath that, we have the exact same thing with the iron, and then the same contraption on this one with the depth adjuster, but this one does not have the lateral adjuster. So in order to move it side to side, what you do is you grab a hammer and you just tap it side to side back and forth. And a lot of block planes actually don't even have a depth adjuster on them. Everything is just locked down into place. There's nothing back here. And all you do is you take a hammer and our mallet and you tap it in to engage it further, or you loosen it, slide it back up, or you tap it to the side to give your lateral adjustment. So often the block planes are just adjust with a mallet, or in my case, I like to actually just grab a small screwdriver and tap it around, it doesn't take much movement at all. And then to give you another idea, I do also have this one, which is a newer one. You'll find these in a lot of the uh, uh, big box stores, which they still work as long as you tinker with them a bit. The same way as the lever on the first one comes off, then you have the iron. But in this case, the lateral adjustment is this weird contraption that swings side to side. And the depth adjuster is actually this knob, which my knob has broken off on this one. Usually there's a little larger knob here that you can turn and will actually move this in and out. It catches with that, slides in and out. And that's just one more style. There's hundreds of other styles on here about how it works. So with that being said, you can see all these planes have a lot of similarities. They have three basic adjustments. Number one, they have a depth adjustment so you can engage and disengage the iron. You can move it in and out. Number two, they have a lateral adjustment so you can move it side to side. And number three, they have a mouth adjustment. In most of these, the mouth actually moves in and out. On the Bailey pattern plane, you can actually move the entire frog back and forth to open and close the mouth. And so you can see how all of these adjustments come together. They're just different ways of doing it. Once you start to see where those adjustments are and what contraption makes that adjustment, you can very easily understand how to adjust the plane and what does it need. Is one side cutting more than the other? Then you need to adjust the lateral. Is it cutting too deep or not cutting at all? Then you can adjust the depth. Are you getting a lot of tear out? Then you might want to close up the mouth. Or you're making big shavings and the mouth is jamming up, you might want to open it up a bit. Once you understand those basics, everything becomes the same on all the planes. You just have to know what contraption is doing what. So I hope this has answered a few questions. Um, I know I'm, I'm just kind of skating through the surface. There are a lot of other things I could go into. I could go into different types of planes. Um, I just wanted to touch the, the basics and give you an understanding about you want to have a depth adjustment, you want to have a lateral adjustment, and you want to be able to adjust the mouth. Once you have those three things, you have a hand plane. And in a lot of the old hand planes, all those things were done with a mallet. You tap it in with a hammer, that allows you to close it up. You tap it side to side, and that allows you to adjust the lateral adjustment, or you make a new hand plane to close up the mouth. <laughs> or you could put in a small piece in there. You'd actually do some adjustments to it, so you'd have a plane with a tight mouth, and you have a plane with a large mouth, which would usually be your scrub plane. Uh, and so you have all those adjustments in here, they're just less pieces and functionality. Whereas with most modern planes, there's now a mechanical method of making those adjustments. And you just have to learn what those adjustments are and you can start to see it. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm sorry I didn't get to every detail. Um, I would be here a lot longer to be able to make that happen. So uh, let me know what you have in the comments down below. Also, if there was some particular thing you'd like to see me or if this led you to an idea of, hey, can you make a video on that? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and make that sometime in the future. I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon, um, the Woodbuyer Right hive mind on Facebook and everyone who is really supporting and making this channel happen. The Wood by Right would not be here without you. I don't have any sponsorships. Uh, I like to say what I want to say as opposed to what the sponsors want me to say. So thank you all for helping financially as well as helping in an encouragement as well as providing ideas for the videos. It really does make Wood by Right happen. If you'd like to find out more about that, Patreon right down there. Also, you can find a link to the Wood by Right hive mind in the description down below. That's about it for today. Until next time. Have a wonderful day.